How you doing? I'm Sean McVay with Sean's Outdoor Adventures and I'm fighting a little cold right now but I'm bringing you this video series on mounting a deer, a whitetail deer. We're doing a shoulder mount and in this particular episode in the series I'm going to be dealing with the hide. I turned the lips, the eyes, the ears, the nose, everything yesterday, salted it and let it hang overnight so it's been hanging and draining you can see here that uh, a lot of fluid has drained out of this hide into my trash bucket here. So in the next step along our journey, I'm going to take the hide, turn it inside out again, and I'm actually going to do a little more shaving on the hide to break down the membrane. There's a membrane on a lot of the skin that we didn't want to, didn't need to worry about yesterday. We're going to shave that a little bit and then we're going to be putting the hide into a pickling solution today so our purpose in shaving today is to really expose that skin so the pickle can penetrate and, and what that does is it helps to just knock out all of the bacteria so when the bacteria continues to break down the, the skin the hair begins to fall out in this process and we want to prevent that from happening and we want that pickle solution to really penetrate into the skin. So that's why we're doing that. I also want to say this. I am not an expert taxidermist. Uh, this is like my fourth time doing a deer. And the first two I ruined. And I, don't even, I didn't even keep them. I, just, I kept the antlers, but I didn't do the mount. And um, so I'm sharing some of the things I've kind of learned along the way. And I'll also mention this, though. Um, I mean, and they don't even know I'm about to say this, but... Mackenzie Taxidermy Supply is where I've been buying most of my stuff. I actually started off buying from Van Dyke's, my very first one, and then they got bought out by Mackenzie. But I have to say, it has been a pleasure dealing with them throughout all the deer mounts that I've done. Um, there's been times I've had questions, I've called them up, and they've answered them, and it's helped me through the journey. So um, I'm going to give more tips on that as we go forward as far as how to buy what materials I think you need to buy or, or should buy and we're gonna get more into that when we get to the actual mounting phase with the mannequin and everything so but for today let's let me grab my hide here turn it back inside out and I'm gonna start the shaving process alright so um, for this phase of the journey uh, here's a couple things I would suggest now they have what's called a flushing beam which you put the thing over and, and for this process I simply took a, uh, this is about a 2 by 8 piece of wood and it was on the fly. The very first time I was doing it I realized I needed some kind of a flushing beam of some type and I just quick grabbed a skill saw and I cut like a wedge on the top. It's not even exact it was just so I could get it up in the neck and um, I did this like five years ago when I tried my first one and it's been leaning against my shed outside. I've used it on the other ones that I've done since that first one and um, so I would suggest something like this if you have a router and you can smooth out the edge you know with a or you know some way of smoothing out the edge that would probably help a little bit um, I've never even done a whole lot as far as improving this but that's one thing um, you know getting a, a piece of wood to use for this part of the process I also bought a flushing knife it's a dull blade. It's dull, I repeat, dull. You don't want a sharp blade for flushing. And um, what we're going to do is put the hide over this, take our dull blade, and scrape it down the hide. So let me go grab the hide, and we'll see how this all works. I just wanted to show you those two pieces of equipment for this phase of the journey. All right, so here's my hide. Um, one thing I want to point out here, uh, next year, I didn't film when I took this off the skull but one thing I want to point out is the back of the neck here there's an incision about six inches long from the back of the ears down so I'm, I'm pointing that out now and I'll show you I'm gonna to add to this video series next year when I get a deer to do this again as far as I'll actually film me taking it off but you're just making an incision about six inches long and then there's a Y split to the ears and I'll show you that more in the mounting process later on. But I just wanted to point that out since I didn't have that displayed before. So I'm going to take this and put it over my beam. This. 
And I have a um, smock type thing on here just to, to keep this off my clothes a little bit. But I'm basically just going to be working this off down to the skin. See the skin right here? I don't. Now that's the one thing with this particular beam. If I was, I might even make another one, maybe with a. This is a two by eight. I might use a two by six, just a little more narrow, uh, because what happens is there's a high spot right here with the way the hair is laying under there, and this is getting scraped pretty extensively, whereas right here is not. So I'm going to have to rotate that. And um, I'm just pointing out if you're going to make something like that, you know, use a beam like this, you might want to use something just a smidge narrower. I'm basically just trying to get this membrane off so that that pickle solution really penetrates. See that right there? I'm trying to get that membrane off. rotate it on my beam a little bit Here's the broadhead hole, the entry hole in the shoulder. Alright, now I've switched over to a 2x4 to get up into the face upper neck area. And again, our, our goal here is to get this membrane off. Um, we're going to do thinning of the hide later, but this membrane, getting that off, is helping with the pickling. Also, when I'm pushing this, I'm not pushing too hard. I did once push real hard and cut a little hole in my hide. Obviously, you can stitch that up, but why make more work for yourself? You'll see that when you get into this. If you don't want to, if you don't have to cut a hole or whatever, you don't want to have to. You don't want to cut holes for no reason. It's extra work. Sewing and stitching later. I have the base of this 2x4 just propped against something heavy over there so it doesn't slide out from me real easily. And I'm just going right around the hide. Working that membrane off. Alright, so here's my hide. Um, and, it, you know, I've got it down to the white here. A lot of this fleshy membranes taken off. There are strands of it here, um, but you know the solution is going to be able to penetrate into the skin. And I'm going to worry about shaving this the rest of the way off later, because um, the next step I'm going to soak this overnight in the solution, and then I'm going to actually take it back out and thin the hide tomorrow. Before I put it, before I even mix my solution and put it in, I'm actually going to turn it part way inside out again. Because once that solution gets in there, I want the skin to be in contact with the solution. And so I'm going to have the hair facing up. But one thing I want to make sure is that the solution really gets into every nook and cranny. So although I'm doing this right like that right now, I'm going to really be working this around in the solution. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to soak it, I'm going to rinse it one time in just regular straight water just to clean off any excess uh, dirt and blood and stuff like that. All right, I got my rinse bucket here, and I just want to mention a couple of sort of housekeeping things while I'm doing this. Before I got this bucket of water, I just swept the floor real good. A lot of salt and pieces of flesh on the floor. I'm working in my basement, so if I didn't think about that and I just started walking around the house, I'm tracking all that throughout the house of course, I got little kids, so I got to be mindful of what I'm exposing them to. But you don't want decaying meat, you know, bits of it all over your house. Um, I mean, obviously, if you have a dog, they'll eat that up right away. But, um, you know, so housekeeping-wise, you know, after a step like that, 
you know, you, I recommend sweeping up. I'm going to probably sanitize the floor a little later because there's little bits of meat and blood all over the place. So I'll kind of scrub it with like a disinfectant um, just for in the future. But um, as I'm rinsing this out in this bucket here, it's filled with, I mean, it's really bloody already. The water's turned red. If my hands weren't all messed up, I'd get the camera and show you, but I mean, it's just basically, I'll try to angle it a little for you. Uh, the water's just real bloody. Getting it to the edge, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's very bloody. So uh, again, this is just a rinse, and then I'm gonna go get my, uh, my other bucket for my pickling solution and put it in that. Alright, so in the past I've used um, a bin like this with a lid on it to do my pickling solution and soak the hide. But what I have found is the hide, I'm going to use this jug of water and place it on the hide to help hold it down under the solution. But with this large bin, parts of the hide would come out around that. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to use this narrow kind of trash can and that's going to help keep everything down in, in theory. It's going to actually be my first time doing it this way. But I've got close to five gallons of water here I'm going to pour in. And for the pickling solution, Use five pounds of uh, salt. So I've cut the tops open on these salts. So there's five pounds of salt to five gallons of water, and then um, two and a half ounces of the acid solution, which I'll add at the end here. Now I'm using warm water to help dissolve some of the salt. In this solution, I could actually do a lot of deer hides in one solution. Like, obviously with the quantity here, I would only be able to fit about one hide in here. I had a stirring stick, where did I put it? I'm just going to stir the salt in for a little bit here. I mean, I could feel it on the bottom of the can. Because that's a lot of salt for you know, just five gallons. I'm just going to stir it for a little while here. Don't drink this water. All right, now I'm gonna take my two and a half ounces of the acid, pour that in. I do have a pH, I do have pH testers somewhere around here. You want the pH to be at or below 2, I believe. Now my water is fairly acidic to begin with around here where I live. So I am not concerned about it being below that. But if I can find my pH tester kit, I'm going to double check before putting the hide in. Obviously if it's not low enough, you just add some more, some more acid. Okay, here's my this little pH test kit here. That gives you a different pH. You dipped a little uh, paper tester in here. We, we want a, basically a bright, a pink is what we're looking for. And I got bubbles on there from stirring. But yeah, I'm at one here. So my pH is good. It's definitely low enough. Kind of hold that out for you. You see the regular color of the strip and then the pink on the end. And that's my little guide there. Now I could actually hang on to that and test it by using the other side next time, which I'll do. I'll just set this over here. Now I can take my hide and put that in there. I've got it partly turned inside out, but I really want to work this around in here and make sure that this acid solution reaches every part of this hide. 
including the ears. Now, as I said, this hide wants to float up out, and so that's going to prevent some of it from being down in the solution. So that's why I'm taking this gallon jug of water. I'm going to lay it on top, and that's going to help hold it down into that solution. I'm actually give it a little encouragement by pushing on it. Um, you could also do two gallon jugs. That's what I used to do when I had it in the bigger bin. I'd have two to try to get as much coverage. But you know, this is something you can check on throughout the day. You know, and um, swish it around, make sure everything's down in there. But you just really want um, this solution to be in contact with that skin, every every part of that skin. I'm just gonna move it around a little bit more. So right here is basically what it looks like right now and there's a little bit of hair sticking up on this side which I don't like. So I'm going to be periodically checking on this and pushing it down in making sure we get good coverage. Alright so at this point I'm going to let this sit overnight, come back tomorrow and then we'll be thinning out the flesh of this, this cape. So this is basically what it looks like in there. Uh, my hair is obviously popping up a little bit over here. This is the very bottom edge of the hide which I'll actually be cutting off because I really saved a lot of extra but I'll get a stick and see if I can push that down in a little bit more but for the most part the hide is submerged.